What's going on, y'all? So lit. Who? What's going on, y'all? First of all, wait. <laughs> mm. You know, I had to take off my nightcap. We'll get into that shit later. Uh, but anyway, love at the lockup. <laughs> Girl, girl, what is up? <sighs> Bitch, we only got two more episodes left. I'm kind of, I'm kind of tight about that. Okay, I'm kind of tight about that. But I feel like, you know, I, it, it's run its course this season, whatever. It's time to get some new blood, even though, you know, um... Oh, bitch, fix yourself. Even though, you know, the stories are still going or whatever. Some some stories kind of, you know, on their last foot and whatever. But let's just get into this video, y'all. Because a bitch is tag. All right. Listen. <coughs> y'all know this is like one of my favorite shows to review. Y'all act. Y'all know that. Because we cut up so much. We cut up so much. <laughs> Bitch, let me stop. Let me stop. I shouldn't be so giddy when I do a review like this. But, but anyway, that's how y'all get good shit. That's how y'all get good shit. Love After Lockup, Season 2, Episode 21, Life After Lockup, Close Calls. Okay? Let's just get Clint and Tracy out the way. Clint and his goddess, or his goddess tuned to be once removed. You know what I'm saying? Um. So at this point, they talk it. Okay? She didn't let him out. She didn't let out the uh, bathroom. Uh, the camera me instant came back in there, you know, because last week he was like, get the fuck out, get out, get out. I said, look at them hoes. Did you see where they showed them hoes in the door? I said, how much they charged him? And if they didn't charge him, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know something. Who paid for it? Him or production? I would make him pay for that shit out of his pocket or his mama do it. You know, his deity, I should say. But anyway, so at this point, Tracy Piss. Tracy Pitt, she trying to have an understanding of what's going on because she read them text messages and basically, and some of them text messages, girl, Clint was up there talking about some, you know, I don't fuck with that bitch no more. She not my goddess no more. You can be my goddess number two, okay? You can replace this girl, all right? She ain't shit. I don't love her or whatever. So you don't love me? You don't love me? Is that what you're trying to say? You don't love me? She was like, I mean, I... I I, I, I do lo love you. I said, oh, wait a minute. Why you saying like that, Clint? You know, you didn't come out concise and, you know, with 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 vigor and, and, and conviction. You didn't come out with that. You was uh, stumbling over that a little bit. I said, oh, is it a little problem? Okay, maybe you really do feel this way. But he tried to clear that up and say, you know, it was because at the time I was mad at you. This happened back in the day. You know, um, you did that whole thing with the car situation and our marriage and, you know, the crack, motherfucking crack, you know, all of that. And then you had to go back to jail. So I was pissed off at you. You know what I'm saying? So I saw comfort elsewhere. I was like, you know what? On the one hand, Clint, you wrong as shit. You wrong as shit if you ain't want to do it or whatever. Find somebody else or whatever. Break it off with Tracy. But at the same time, Tracy, I mean, you can't be 100% mad. You can be mad, but you can't be all the way mad, man. You can be mad, but you can't be mad, mad. Listen, let me tell you something. When I go to the shop, mind you, I went to the shop last week. Last Friday, to be exact. And they cut this, this hair right here. I'm sorry, to, because it's bothering me. They always cut it. Okay, look how it grew back already. Look how the shit's grew back already. Already. I'm going to cut it when I finish. Anyway, um, got me out here looking raggedy and everything else looking all good. But anyway, so, um, you know, at this point, he was like, I still love you. She was like, do you still love me? Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, I still love you. Uh, I'm going to be with you forever. And he was like, you know, at the end of the day, I still love you too, you know. He makes me mad sometimes and all that stuff. We fight or whatever, but that's still my man. I said, look at this crackhead love, okay? Y'all better do that shit, okay? I feel like rocks. Love, 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 you know? Um... But at this point, you know, she was like, you're going to have to make this up to me. And then they was like, um, <clears throat> why don't we go down to the little chapel and go get married out here since we in Vegas or whatever. I said, what? She said, so you can prove that you love me or whatever. Let's get remarried. Y'all just got married. Y'all ain't even been married for a year. Okay. She was like, just so it can feel real to me. I was like, all right, do what you got to do. And it was like, since I'm on good terms, somewhat good terms with your mama. 
can we get your mama call? Let her know. And Clint like, hold up, hold up, shawty, you moving a little too fast. Moms don't even know that I'm out here. Okay, moms don't know I'm out here. I was like, okay, but she went on ahead and gave Alice a call. Girl, Alice surprised me when she answered that phone and she was like, hey. I was like, oh. She was like, what's going on, guys? I was like, oh, nothing much, Alice. How you doing? You know? And so, uh, I was like, guess where we're at? We're at Vegas. Oh, you're in Vegas. What are you about to do? What's going on? No more surprises. I don't know. I can't handle it. Don't want no kids right now. Oh, no. I said, do Tracy look like she in any position to give somebody some kids? Do even your son look like any position to take care of somebody's kids, let alone himself? Okay? No. Okay? So, at this point, um... It's like, we're about to go to the little chapel and we're about to get remarried or whatever. You're going to be cool with that. Alice was like, uh-uh. If you want to do it the right way, we go to the church. That's what we do. Okay, we go to the church amongst family, amongst friends and all that stuff. Not to the little chapel out there in Vegas, but you know what? Y'all already there. Y'all already got your minds depend on uh, made up and everything. So go ahead and do what you're going to do. Do what you're going to do. It is what it is. Okay. I was like, mm, all right. You know, Alice, you handled that um, phone call a little bit better than I thought you would. I said, you know what, Clinton, Tracy? Okay. Have fun with that. Moving on to Scott and Liz. Showdown and hold down, bitch. Okay, listen. Let me tell you something. Lizzie is getting on my nerves at this point. Lizzie. Lizzie. You. <sighs> Lizzie is acting as if. She did not break up with this man. And that she did not leave this man. And that that man did not leave her. Okay? That is what she's acting like. And it's getting on my nerve. Okay? And at this point, um, it's like, sis, you can't dictate what he do and what he's done and the plans that he didn't already put in process when you were, and him were not together. Y'all weren't together for a minute. Probably a couple months, a month or whatever. And in the process of that, you know, he done went on about his life. He done went on a few dates. You went on a few dates, okay? And so you don't see him tripping about what you probably did with whoever you did it with when they was not together. But now you tripping because you are jealous. You're insecure as hell. And you just, you just pathetic. At this point, Lizzie, I'm sorry. You know, you can take your skills and teach a whole bunch of women a whole bunch of stuff. Some men too, okay? You know how to scam. But you out here being a jealous bitch. That's what you out here doing. And I don't understand it. I really don't, girl. So at this point, she come out the bathroom or wherever she was at. And she got the bathrobe on. And I said, mm, what's got it? Y'all just had quarters? Or you just came out the bathroom. What happened? You know, and then um somebody opening up the door and it's Miss Charlene. <laughs> Lizzie and Charlene. So um you got a key? Do you got a key? Girl, I got a key. Of course. I mean I live here. That's why I would have a key. Okay, bitch, but look, let me tell you what I got. I got this. A ring, okay? Scott gave me that ring or whatever. I'm his girl, whatever. Okay, and I won't, room, um, you know, believe that until Scott say that out of his mouth or whatever. So, you up here being a little hoe. You fucking around with Sky and all this stuff. Wait a minute. I ain't fucking around with nobody. You know, I live here. I been here. It is what it is. I said, how are you going to come in her in her nurse outfit? Her CN, CNA. Girl, I said, she a CNA or RN? You know, C-N-R-N, whichever one you want to call it. Girl, I said, what's going on, Lizzie? Why are you acting like this? Now, truth be told, I know I ain't the only one who think that, you know, Scott and Charlene either had something going on or, you know, Charlene probably got a little feelings with Scott. Okay, and she just haven't acted on it yet. She trying to stay in the friend, uh, friend zone or whatever. But at the same time, even if she don't, Lizzie, you doing too goddamn much. Scott come out there trying to figure out what's going on. Tell her exactly what you said. You said this about her and she was this. I mean, I said that, you know, um, you know, it's a bum, bummer that she had to go through what she had to go through. So I let her, you know, um, stay at the house because she needed somewhere to stay. And, you know, that's what it is. And, and, and what else? And what else? You said that you didn't want to take care of her and she was doing all this stuff or whatever. I mean, I did not say that. Charlene's just standing there looking like, bitch, I ain't got to say shit because, um, you know, they're going to sink each other. I did not say that. 
I did not say that. I did not say that. Yes, you did, Scott. Yes, you did. Girl, the whole time, I'm like, this is pathetic. Okay? I wasn't even entertained by it. I just really wanted Charlene to haul off on Leslie. I really did. But Charlene, girl, you better than me. You better than me because either I would have walked out or I would have just slapped that girl and shut up because that's what some people like Leslie need. They just need a good slap. And at this point in time, I would have said, you know, Leslie probably beat Charlene ass because she'd been in jail for all her life practically and she had to fight all her life and, you know, fight her for protection and shit like that. But Charlene looked like she could throw some hands as well. So I don't know who would have won that fight. But at the end of the day lizzie chill okay you're doing absolutely too much and it's like for no reason okay moving on from that um andrea and lamar andrea and lamar go down to utah he is not here for the whole thing um andrea is all the way here for it and i just am i the only one who's kind of creeped out by the whole thing okay and and creeped out in the sense that it did feel a little cultish. And now I see when people say JWs feel a little cultish. I see that now. But, you know, that wasn't my experience. So I ain't going to say that. But, you know, these Mormons and stuff, they be going door to door just like your witnesses do too. You know what I'm saying? And the way that they be trying to convert. You know, I'm just getting ahead. I'm just getting ahead. But anyway, so Lamar, you know, he basically like whatever. He looking at this place like he gonna be. He don't want to be in no place where it's just gonna be them two, the only black folks there. And then you know he want a few black folks there. You know, not just them. You know. And so they get to Utah, and of course, um, Andreas all giddy. They want to take you know photos with the sign and all this stuff and woo woo woo. And oh my God, you're gonna meet my friend. And I hope that, you know, as soon as he meet my friends and, you know, get the feel of how it is for me out here in Utah and see how much I love it, he's going to love it too. And he's going to want to come down. He's going to want to convert to Mormonism. He's going to do all this. And I said, girl, no, no, it ain't finna happen. Okay. That's not going to happen. Let me tell y'all something. If you cannot accept me for everything that I am, do not do, we, we can't do this. Okay. I'm not converting. I'm sorry. I'm I'm spiritual, okay? I believe there is a God. I believe in his son. I believe in a lot of things, okay? But I'm not particularly into the religious aspect of things because religion is a cause of a lot of contention amongst a lot of people, okay? And we see that it's going on, all right? And I grew up in a religion that kind of stifled me a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm not necessarily a religious person like that. I'm more so spiritual and shit, um, you know, whatnot. And so... At this point, if we're trying to get together and you can't accept that I'm that way, I'm not trying to convert to your religion. I don't want you to convert to, you know, spirituality if that's what you want to do. Or, you know, I'm going to let you do what you're going to do and you're going to let me do what I'm going to do. And if we can't coexist like that, then this ain't going to work. This ain't going to work, okay? Um, But at the same time, Lamar already made it known that it ain't going to work by when they came over there to the friend's house. You know, he like... I don't want to go to no party and see how it is. This party out here probably going to be like, you know, them people, a whole bunch of religious music being played, church music just being played or whatever. I just hope they be super lit. I said, nigga, you know it ain't going to be that way. You know it ain't going to be that way. He got some non-alcoholic beer because at first I said, they Mormons. Lamar, you bringing beer to the goddamn thing? I mean, I get it. I respect your religion. I would. I would, okay? So if you say you can't do certain stuff or whatever, I wouldn't bring it around you like that unless it was an accident. But Lamar got out that car in his blues, baby. He was repping his set color. I said, come on, Nips. He blew up in this bitch. I was waiting for him to just start see walking up on that motherfucker to the doorway. Okay, with the goddamn... Um, um, jars of beer. I said, oh no. Why do you have beer? When he get into the house, I was like, oh my God, you brought non-alcoholic beer. He was like, yo, for real though. So I went to the store, right? And then, you know, I just grabbed the beer. She was like, I thought you was going to just go ahead and bring the real beer. You know, I was trying to, but I just grabbed the beer. I didn't even realize that it said non-alcoholic till right now. I was like... Andrea made you get that, okay? That's what it was. But anyway, he had his blue bandana, his gray bandana. He was matching all out with his blue scully, navy scully, scully and all that stuff, whatever. He sees Pe her, uh, Andrea Peeps. Now, Andrea, one of her friends was like, 
Oh my God. Now see, this is like the second time that I seen Lamar. The first time was at the wedding and you know, um, they were supposed to come out here. So hopefully everything will be all right. You know what I'm saying? And then the other friend goes, now, oh my God, if I had not known that Lamar was in jail for like 20 years, I would never have known or pictured or even thought that he was a seasoned criminal. I said, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? It just came off really fake. I'm sitting here like, and then when they was like dabbing him up and doing all that stuff, you know how I said, uh-uh, don't do that. Don't try to change the way that you, pre don't don't try to change yourself to fit in with somebody else. That's, that's, that's low-key offensive. But no, it, 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 I was like, eh, they, they, they rubbing me raw a little bit. I said, you come sat at the house and I was just like, ugh, this party city. Church decoration stuff, love peace and stuff. Girl, I ain't got, I ain't got, mm -mm. it was a turn off for me. And Lamar goes out there to go uh, fishing or whatever. They got a pond in the back. I said, oh, this is the type of community that y'all live in. And then dude with the red hair, I said, oh my God, it's the look of the Irish. Me lucky charms. Um, no shade. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I offended somebody just for seeing that. But it just was there. It just was there. That red head. It's not natural. I had to put that question up there. I said, that can't be natural. I ain't never seen nobody with no red hair sprout from their roots like that. You died that shit. It looked creepy, okay? It didn't, it didn't add, it add to the creepiness of this whole scene where, um, you know, them trying to talk about Tennyson going on his um mission. He's at the age where he's about to go on his mission. Now, I watched Sister Wise. I used to watch Sister Wise, okay? They used to come on TLC. I don't know if they come back for a new season or whatever. And they're Mormons. So, you know, I learned a lot about the Mormon church or whatever from watching that. So, when he was talking about the mission and stuff, I knew what he was talking about. And so, I was like, okay, I can follow this or whatever. And I was like, yeah, this is around the age. Um, You know, Tennyson is around the age where they go do all that stuff or whatever. And so, um... It was like, when you come down and visit the church so you can see how it is, so you can understand Tennyson a little bit better. And it was like, uh-uh, bro, listen, y'all, it feel like y'all up here trying to convert me to come to the religion. It feel a little creepy or whatever. But at the end of the day, ain't nobody finna convert me to do nothing, you know. I ain't finna step in nobody church and finna do nothing like this or whatever. Mind you, you know, they got done with that. Mind you, the other conversation that's going on with the women in the house is Andrea, she got this whole scheme plotted and um made up so that she can um come out here to Utah because she was like, she already, already set this up. You know, I'm already looking into a job and here I call my ex-employee, employer, and um was discussing some job opportunities or whatever, you know, because he might like it out here and we can just move on out here and all this stuff. Her friend Michelle, on the other hand, other black sis, sis was like, you know what, this ain't, you know, I probably ain't in no relationship right now, and I probably am, I don't know, okay, I can't, I can't tell, you know what I'm saying, so I'm just gonna say either or, but I don't feel like this is how you're supposed to start your relationship off with all these lies and doing all this stuff behind people's backs and, you know, trying to get them to do this and do that, that ain't gonna work, that ain't gonna cut it, she out there talking to Lamar before they go um, fishing or whatever, and was just like, um, how you feel about this? He was like, you know, at one point, I did want to come out here to Utah, you know, when I was on parole, because I'm on parole for a few more months, hopefully, you know what I'm saying, and um, we was supposed to come out here to Utah in the first place, but, you know, I've been locked down for 20 years, and I couldn't come out here, so, at the same time, it's like, I've been missing a whole bunch of my people, you know, my whole life that went past, I got to reconnect with my family or whatever, so now, like, I'm back in LA, it's like, I don't even know if I really want to come out here, like, it's hard to get out here, you know, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. It's hard to, you know, get out that mindset that I don't want to leave L.A. and all that shit. She was like, yeah, I understand. I said, Lamar, I think you married the wrong person. Because <laughs> Michelle is way more understanding than Andre. Andre better watch your back, okay? Um, Michelle finna take a man like this, okay? But uh, at the end of the day, <sighs> Andre, whatever plan and concoction that you are trying to cook up, it is not going to work okay let's just get on ashley and megan this how they ended the episode they ended you know megan going to see the divorce lawyer baby divorce lawyer she was just like this so why haven't you filed for divorce already after um sarah i should say sarah gave her the rundown of what happened in her relationship the lawyer looked up like she, her face was just all judgment like and she said exactly what we was all thinking 
Why have you not filed for divorce yet throughout all of this? How do you feel that he will be with the family and, you know, with the kids? When you think he'll just um, pick up and run off with him, it's like, at this point, I don't know. And I said, girl, don't don't, don't mess that black man up, okay? He he already going through enough, and he don't need to be fucked up no more. I mean, well, at this point, he can't he can't do it because then you really ain't going to have him in, his life, in your life, okay? I mean, you could be petty and put his ass back in jail, but you know what I'm saying. Don't do that. Don't do that, okay? But at this point, you know, she wanted to serve him the papers. The lawyer was like, no, we are serving. But she talking to her friend about how she felt like she failed that life. She failed as a mother, failed as a wife. She hasn't felt as a wife ever um, ever since they got married and all that stuff. Woo, woo, woo. And the friend trying to reassure her, no, that ain't your fault. This ain't you. Whatever. I said, the friend wouldn't fuck her. That's all I get. I get, I'm going to fuck that from that friend each and every time. I see her. Her and her buzz off haircut. I, I get that bad from her. She has a harsh face. She really does. She look like she takes them down. Okay? Like, she goes to town. <laughs> Pac-Man on that bitch. Not Mrs., but Pac-Man on that bitch. Okay? But, um, anyway... So, she gets ready to go down there to um, Michigan so she can have Michael see the kids or whatever. And it was so sad and cute at the same time when little Aviana was like, I haven't seen Tim in years and years and years and years. I said, girl, you're only three. You're only three. Okay? Subtract a couple of them years and I get where you're coming from. You know, it was cute though. Um, But I'm nervous. Mom, why are you nervous? I said, don't tell kids that. Don't tell kids that. They pick up on everything. They pick up on a lot of things. Don't do that. Don't have adult conversation with these kids like that, okay? And, um, you know, she's also going to serve him the divorce papers. Meanwhile, down in Texas, Aiden go see her daddy. He is cooking up some um vegetable kebabs, okay? I said, oh, you better grill, daddy. He do look like he can fuck up some grill stuff. Like, he look like he can throw some stuff on the grill and just, oh, grill the shit out of it. I said, you know what? Mmm. <laughs> Man, I'm about to be your stepmama. No, let me stop playing. Nope, nope, because um, they did a close-up on Daddy, and Daddy got a whole bunch of moles on his neck, and I was, like, really confused at how that shit happened. It looked like my grandma's face. My grandma had to get uh, some of them things removed. It looks so much better now. But, uh, yeah, you might need to look into that. But Daddy, Daddy is like... Your mama got sense. I got sense. How is it your grandma got sense? You know, how is it that we got a daughter like you that ain't got no sense, okay? You going around messing around with this dude because she told him that she went down there to New York uh, to Michigan or whatever to get him out of jail and all that stuff. And, um, you know, he's still doing what he's doing. And he was pissed. Let me talk to him, okay? Let me talk to him. Mind you, the daddy is not a cop, but he got cop friends, and I think he work in, like, the prison system. So, he know all about this stuff. So, of course, he's double embarrassed. He's, like, triple embarrassed at this point. You know, his cop friends and all this stuff probably looking at the show like, your daughter's stupid as shit. This how you raise your kid? You know they're judging. You know they're judging. Typical. Typical niggers. That's what they're trying to say. You know? But, um, anyway, so at this point, he was like, give me that phone. Put him on the phone. No, Dad, I don't want you talking to him. Put him on the phone. Yo, what's up, bruh? This my, um, this Megan, uh, dad, okay? And he, she told me about y'all little situation. I said, uh-uh, daddy, stop it, stop it. Daddy did look like he was about to whoop his ass, though. I did not like the answers that he was giving to, um, daddy. He wasn't giving respect or whatever. You know, he asked him why you didn't tell him that he was married. Why you didn't do this? Why you didn't do that? Okay, we both didn't hurt each other. We both did this. Oh, how my daughter hurt you? Well, I mean, that ain't for me to say. If she want to tell you, she could tell you. I said, yeah. The daddy hung up on him. And I would have did the same thing, okay? It was like, this the type of nigga that you want to be with? Bruh, girl, get your shit together, okay? Megan and Sarah, we don't feel sorry for you at this point. We're over y'all, okay? Moving on. Mars to fucking Lena. Mars to Lena goes over there to Tito house. And I don't know if that was really Marcelino's account. But um, he, somebody that was... Claiming to be him was going back and forth with some of y'all in my comments. I was just reading like, anyway. But even if I wanted to like Marcelino, like give him some props or whatever, I can't fully do that 
because he does stupid shit like this that pisses me off and makes me look at him and be like, this is why people say you're doing too much, you're way overprotective, and your actions cause more problem. You want to stop problems, but you in turn cause a big problem that's worse than the next problem, and it didn't even have to be, okay? And that is irritating in itself, all right? You go down there trying to talk to Tito, Tito, man to man. You know, I don't know Tito, but I know what he's doing, and I've been in that situation and all this stuff or whatever, you know, what he's doing with Giovanni, and I've been there and all this stuff. Okay, you may have popped up in his life and been there as much as you've been there or whatever, because, you know, if he's with Britney, 9 out of 10, Giovanni, gonna be with you because you won't let Britney out your goddamn sight okay that's what it is so of course you're gonna see him a lot you don't know what goes on with Tito I don't know what goes on with Tito but at the end of the day you're coming over there and you're talking to this man that really holds the power in his hand okay when it comes to this custody thing and when it comes to Britney all right because of why he has 100% full custody. He has that 100% full custody. And if he feels like, if he want to get it in his petty spirit and just want to say, you know, they not acting right, all he got to do is call the courts or call the cops and bring her, bring her, be her ass back in jail, okay, for some petty shit. And then she'll probably be back on probation or be fucked up. All because of what? Because of your ass, okay? And that's exactly what could have happened in this whole moment. He go over to this man's house trying to tell him about himself, about, how he won't custody how he not been in his life why you haven't done this it's not your place okay i understand you in that boy's life or whatever but you are not the father you are not the authoritative figure you are not the custodian in this whole um situation that is britney's job and like britney told you marcelino because i'm pretty sure you're gonna watch this i'm pretty sure you're gonna see this britney told you hold on because i know how to deal with him okay in certain situations especially dealing with men and their egos you can't just go for the gusto and get 100 percent custody when your wife has had a background on her that is still freshly on her okay and can still be used against her okay you can't do that. You take baby step. You don't go full in charge like that. Okay? That's what you fucked up, bruh. And that's what Brittany was trying to tell you. But you don't want to listen. I don't care what your background is. Everybody ain't the same. Yes, it's cool to see some stuff and to step in and to help out or whatever and to stop things in their track. But you have to go about it in steps. Sometimes you have to take baby steps, bruh. And that's what you don't understand. You so headstrong. You so gut go for the gusto type of nigga like no that's not what you do baby let me tell you something when tito got up was like bro you ain't fin first of all you disrespect that man in his own house okay for that reason alone you deserve real ass to be whooped second you talking talk about taking the child from him okay and he was like do you understand the reason why i got full custody because britney never showed up okay i said britney probably was on her stuff you know she a changed woman now that's what it seems like you know so i i i, I wouldn't put it past that tito is um not telling the truth he's probably telling the truth about that whole thing but when they got into it and they bossed up on each other Bitch, I was like, Tito beat his ass. Beat his ass because Marcelino either hit him or pushed him or whatever. And Tito was trying to do all this. I said, you ain't finna beat this man's ass and some slacks and some shoes in this house, okay? No, I said, Tito, where the fuck you finna go? Okay? Bitch, at this point, I'm like, uh-uh, beat his ass, Tito. Beat his ass, Tito. They get to wrestling or whatever. Next thing I know, in like 2.5 seconds of them actually touching each other, Marcelino had this nigga down on the floor. I said, God damn it, Tito. We was rooting for you. We was, that military trainer came in through, bitch. I said, we was rooting for you, Tito. You didn't let us down. You didn't let us down, okay? Maybe Tito was thinking, he looked like the nigga that probably had called the cops or whatever. So let me not give it all that I can give because then it could hurt my case. Just let me look look good and to the judge eyes or whatever that this man that came over and initiated a fight in my own house. <laughs> you know? I don't know what he was thinking. But at this point, I was like, get up. Tito, get up. Mm, Tito, what is going on? Marcelino had that nigga in the headlock. I said, damn it, man. Damn it! Okay, Marcelino came out of that motherfucker with a stretched out shirt. That's it. That's the equivalent to a little couple of pull strands of hair. I said, what the hell? 
What the hell, Tito? Well, props to that, Marcelino. You held your ground on that one, okay? She didn't get back home. Brittany like, what the fuck you done did now, bitch? I'm getting text messages from him talking about something. If you don't bring Giovanni over here in 30 minutes, I'm calling the cops. I said, hold up, see? You done made the situation worse than it did even have to be. Then gonna say... I know what I did was messed up, and I know Brittany is mad, but I had to confront Giovanni because he tried to talk to me the way that he talked to Brittany, and he don't respect Brittany. No, you don't respect Brittany, because if you did respect her, you wouldn't did the course of action that you took, okay? You would have waited to at least, if you wanted to go over there, go over there with her and let her handle that shit if you wanted to do that. Sit your ass in the car, we'll keep the car running, and just kick some shit went down, okay? You know what I'm saying? Oh, Marcelino. Marcelino. You know, your intentions are good. I get it. But you just go away about shit the wrong way. That machismo attitude got to go, bruh. Damn. Then maybe I fucking like your ass. Let me stop. Anyway, that's love at the lockup. Y'all tell me how y'all felt. Y'all know I was feeling this episode. A couple of stories, you know, I had to go deep into. You know, gave y'all a full-ass review. 30 minutes, okay? Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And I'll see y'all later.